Okay, we're in section 70 now. The structure document, very consistent. There'll be contents for you to read through. There'll be examples for you to look at. Um, certainly I'll go over the examples at the whiteboard. And then there's exercises for you to work on. <clears throat> my name is Ron Bannon. This is a draft version of my adaption of Webster Wells' Advanced Course in Algebra, which dates back to 1904. The document um, is being made available to the Prison Mathematics Project participants only at this point, but it will be published in the future. And uh, if you're interested, teachers and students, you can reach out to me. My email address is Bannon. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, that's B as in boy, the at symbol, N-N-O-N dot U-S. All right, let's take a look, see what the content's going to be. And the content over here is going to be um, the gra graphical representation of simultaneous quadratic equations with two unknowns. All right, so we'll go through that. Certainly my treatment's gonna be different than Wells's. What I mean by that, it's gonna look different, but it's really the intent's the same, all right? So I'll go through the content, and certainly as I do that, um, we'll talk about each example as it goes along, all right? So I'm gonna just scroll through it real quick, and I'll get busy with the, um, with the work over here. Now certainly I'm gonna point out in a primitive sense I think probably, if in a primitive sense, you probably should come up with some points over here. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat a little bit. I'm going to use my graph, and I recommend you do the same. So if I were to look at this problem over here, probably the first thing I would do is y squared. I'd probably factor out a 4, and i get x plus 1. And then I would start setting x to a number. And I'm going to say probably the easiest number to set it equal to would be minus 1. And why is that? Well, if you did that, what would you get? y squared equals 0 which means y is equal to 0. So I have one pair, ordered pair, which is minus 1, 0. OK, I got that point done. All right, I'm going to get another point. And someone says, what other point would you pick? Well, i got to be honest with you. You know, I'm looking at y squared. So what I do know is I know 4 times x plus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0. It has to be. And when would that be true? Well, let's, let's do that. That means x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0, or x is greater than or equal to minus 1. So now I know my graph is everything above minus 1, including minus 1. All right? So this point over here is actually the start of the graph. <coughs> now what I want to do is I want to pick another value for x that would be easy for me. I'm going to say x equals 0. All right, that's definitely above minus 1. Now, why is it, why is it easy? Well, let's look. I'll tell you why it's easy. If I, if I put that point down, what would I get? I would get y squared is equal to 4, which means the y would be plus or minus 2. So this gives you two points. Let's write this down. 0, 2, and 0, minus 2. I'll plot those points down for you. Again, I'm looking for easy points. I'm going to do another one, and I'm going to say 3 is easy for me. Again, we're just taking really simple points. What do you get there? <coughs> well, you'd get y squared. Let's see if I chose 3. And again, I want to point out, I'm looking at this because it's easier for me. What would you get? If I chose 3, that would be 16, right? Well, now what do I know? Well, if x is 3, y would equal plus or minus 4. This is two more points, by the way. I'll write them down for you. 3, 4, and 3 minus 4. Let me do that. 3, 4, and 3 minus 4. I think at this point, you know, certainly I know the graph is down there, but I think you got a good idea what the structure is going to look like. Now, if you don't, you need to take other points, right? You need to take other points. So what's another good point? You know, certainly looking at it, um, I certainly want to make perfect squares out of this over here. So the next one would be what? Let's take a look at that. And, um, you know, if I took 5, 5 plus 1 is 6, and 6 times 4 is not a perfect square. So I'm going to say the next one would probably be 36 for me, right? And how would you make that a 36? I would say 8. So I'm going to put x equals 8 down. And if you did that, what would you get? Well, you would get y squared equals 9 times 4, which is 36, which means the y would be plus or minus 6. All right, so the y is plus or minus. 
Let's write that down. So at 8, you'd get 6, and at 8, you'd get minus 6. Well, let me do that. Put this over here. That's 8, 6, and then 8 minus 6 is over here somewhere. Again, I'm just kind of ballparking it. But again, looking at it, I, you know, connected dots, so to speak. But I know the picture's down here. I'm going to put this down for you. And again, I want to emphasize, I'm not really using any kind of profound knowledge about this structure. I'm just looking at points. That's all I'm doing. Is that the best way to graph? Absolutely not. It's not the best way to graph. These are conic sections, and we have better techniques for that. But right now, you know what? Points do work. And connecting the dots do, does work. All right, let's look at this one over here. And look, if I were doing this one over here, I, again, I, I would look for simple points. And I want to point out, looking for simple points, you know, looking at it, I know it's tough. And there's many ways to do the problem, by the way. I'm not saying this is taking points is your way to go. But I would set X, let me see, I would set Y to be zero. What would this give me? This would give me X squared is equal to one, or X equals plus or minus one. Well, I'll write that down for you, and that's going to be 1, 0. These are ordered pairs, minus 1, 0. All right? All right, I'm going to write it a little bit differently. I'm going to write it as x squared equals 1 plus 2y squared. Now, I'll take another point. I'm not going to say the points are going to be easy to do, but I guess if I set x to be 0, right? Well, if you set x to be 0, what do you notice about this thing over here? It's not possible. It's not possible with real numbers. All right, let me, I'll look at the picture later, by the way. I'm going to do a real kind of simple picture down here. All right, I'm going to put the first point down, which is 1, <coughs> excuse me, 1, 0 over here and minus 1, 0. All right, I just did this point and that point. I'm, I'm just ballparking. I'm not doing a great job ballparking either. Now, certainly, you know, I, I couldn't pick x to be 0, right? Because that, that would never happen. And then my question is, what's the minimum x could be? <clears throat> well, look at the minimum it could be, you know, just looking at it over here. This number over here, it's going to be 1. So I'm going to say plus or minus 1. I got that. I'm, I'm still at that. But now I'm going to start thinking, you know, let me pick a bigger number. Let me pick 2. Now, you have to start to realize, by the pick 2, I should also pick minus 2. Let me put that down for you. What would you get? Well, 2 or minus 2 would give me 4, right? And what do you get? 1 plus 2y squared. This would be 3 equals 2y squared. 3 halves equals y squared. That's a tough number, isn't it? But I do get two numbers. And what do I get over there? I would get y equals plus or minus the root of 3 over 2. I'll put this down. So, um, you know, 2. And again, we're doing this over here. There's two numbers there. This is the y, and there's two numbers over here. And these are the two numbers. So let me kind of ballpark it. And, you know, 3 has like, you know, 1 point something. So I'm going to say up here somewhere. It's the root of that, right? And then down here. And again, this might look strange to you. And I'll take another point over here, the minus 2. I'm just kind of ballparking it. I'm getting a feel for it. And this is very crude, by the way. I want to point out crudeness. Some say, I don't even know how to connect together. And I'm not saying you do. Let's take another point. All right? So I'm going to pick x to be 3. And we're just picking points over here. What do you get? 9 equals... 1. By the way, I should say plus or minus 3, because when you square it, it's still going to be 9. And then you get plus 2y squared. What do you get there? 8 is 2y squared. And divide both sides by 2, you get 4 equals y squared, which means y is plus or minus 2. So let me put this down. 3, you get a y. Minus 3, you get a y. And you get 4 points. Now I'm going to put that down for you. So, you know, 3, 2, somewhere over here. And then 3 minus 2 over here. I'd also get minus 3, something over here, um, you know, minus 3 in the X, and then 2 up, and then 2 down. All right, I'm kind of looking at it. I'm not saying I got it perfect, but I'm going to say maybe something like this over here. I'm going to connect these dots together in a reasonable way.
And again, this is very crude, and we're trying to learn from our crudeness. Let's see the better picture. I've seen that over here. This goes on forever in those directions. All right? I, I do want to point out, you're noticing some features over here. There's a lot of missing uh, values between <coughs> minus 1 and 1. All right? Now, this one over here, I'm going to try something different. I'm kind of looking at it, and I, I, I get it. it. It looks tough to me. I'll be honest with you. But what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to, I'm going to try to rewrite it. And by the way, in general, conic sections, these are all conic sections, need to be rewritten so they're simple to graph. But this one's not too bad. Let me write this down for you. So I can put the x's together. And I can put the y's together. And that equals 4. And I can complete the square on these guys over here. Each one I'm going to complete the square on. I just plan around with it. Half of minus 4 is minus 2. When you square it, you get plus 4. Remember, if you add 4 to the left side, you must add it to the right side. Well, let's do the next one. And half of 2 is 1. Square it, you get 1. So we get 1 over here. Let me keep going. I'm going to put this down. This is going to be x minus 2 squared plus y plus 1 squared is equal to 9. And I'm going to pick some easy points over here. And someone says, what well, are the easy points to pick? I'm going to say x equals 2 is an easy point to pick. All right, I'm going to write down this down. If I pick x equals 2, what would I get? I would get y plus 1 squared equals 9. This means y plus 1 is plus or minus 3, or y would equal minus 1 plus or minus 3. Or y would equal, let's see, minus 1 plus 3 is going to be 2, or minus 1 minus 3 is minus 4. So I got two points from that. I'll write them down for you. So the x is 2, the y is 2. The other point I got is going to be, uh, let's see, 2 minus 4, right? All right, so these are two nice points I got. I'm going to do two more points. All right, the other points I'm going to do is, I'm going to choose y to be minus 1 now. And if you did that, what would you get? You'd get x minus 2 squared. And this is a very crude technique, by the way. Now, if I chose minus 1, you know, the y plus, the, if y is minus 1, minus 1 plus 1 is none. So now I get 9. And what does this mean? x minus 2 is equal plus or minus 3. I'm using the square root rule. x equals 2 plus or minus 3. So what do you get for x? x would be 2 plus 3, which is 5. And the other one would be or, I'm sorry about that, 2 minus 3, which is minus 1. So what do I get? I get minus 1, minus 1. And the other point I get is what? I get um, 5, right? So 5 minus 1. All right? So I got, let me point out, I got 4 points, right? Now someone says, could you get other points? Of course you can. I'm not saying you can't get other points. I'm just, I always stand for the easy ones. All right? So I, I want to, you know, point out that these are all conic sections they're giving you, all right? They might be degenerate conic sections, but they're still conic sections. So what I'm going to do over here is just kind of look at the graph and see if I got the points what I'm saying I got. And what they say? I should get 2, 2. I'm seeing that point. They said 2 minus 4. I'm seeing that point. What else did they say? Minus 1, minus 1. I'm seeing that point. And the other point they said is 5 minus 1. And I'm seeing that point over here. Now, i got to be honest with you, the other points might be easy, uh, difficult to get, all right? But I, I do want to point out, there's, you know, it seems like a good deal of symmetry in the problem. And, um, you know, I'm looking at it, I'm looking, I'm looking at this over here. I'm looking at it. I'm going to say it seems reasonable. You know, just looking at it, just you're looking at these terms over here. That's a term and that's a term. And it's two positive numbers being added together, right? No matter what I do about it, two positive numbers being added together. I really got to restrict the x's and the y's. So I'm, I'm starting to understand that, you know, maybe these things should be restricted. That the x is restricted to certain values. Let's take a look at it and see what the x is being restricted to. And let's talk about it. So it looks like the x is being restricted, and let's talk about why it is. The x is being restricted between two values. 
and we'll talk about the y's. So the x is being restricted between, it looks like minus 1, and what other number? It looks like 5. Now, why would that be? Well, if you saw this over here, minus 1 would make this 3. I'm sorry, minus 3. And minus 3 squared would be 9. And that's definitely restricted. Now, certainly, the restriction would be this is going to be a, a non-negative number, so I couldn't have any number there that's going to uh, you know, make that uh, a negative number. Right, so it's, it, the restriction certainly minus 1 makes sense because this thing squares out to be 9. And the other one's 5. And what's 5 minus 2? 3. And 3 squared is also 9. All right, let's take a look at the, the y's now without going through too much work. What would the y restriction be? Not looking at my graph, by the way, but the y's restrictions. I'm not looking at the graph, by the way. I'm just looking at this. And this is a non-negative number over here. I'm just looking at that. And, and you know, I would say the most that number could be is 2. And why is that? 2 plus 1 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. And the least that number could be would be minus 4, because minus 4 plus 1 is minus 3, and that squared is 9. All right, let's look at the graph. And that seems reasonable, looking at it. And I'll put this over here. I'm seeing that in the graph, too. And what is this object? This is an equation of a circle. All right, let me just look at the center of it. And the center's right about here, right? Let me write the center now, because it has something to do with that, that equation I've written down over there. The center is, looks like 2, right? Comma minus 1. I want to point this out to you. Give me a second. I'm hoping you're seeing that. And I'm hoping you're seeing that now. All right? Let me write this down for you. The equation of a circle is going to look like this. x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals the radius squared. The radius of this object over here is 3 units. All right? So let me write this down for you. If you can write an equation in that form, it's going to be a circle with the center at h comma k, and the radius will be r, all right? So in this example over here, the center would be 2 minus 1, and the radius, well, what squares to 9? 3, all right? Again, again, I'm not saying you're cutting everything we're saying over here. Now, here's a, here's a simultaneous system. And the, the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it the way we've always done it. And certainly, I, I, I would like to get a graph of it. And, you know, some graphs are easier than others. But before I do that, I would like to know the point of intersection. So what I want to do is I'm going to do what's called substitution. So I'm going to try to solve this for y. What are you going to get? 3x minus 5 is equal to y. And then going to plug that in up here. And let's write this down for you. So you're going to get 3x minus 5 squared equals 4x. Again, I'm just trying to find a point of intersection or points of intersection. Now, this is quadratic. I'm expecting to see two points. What do you get there? 9x squared minus 30x plus 25 equals 4 x. Sorry about that. 9x squared minus 34x plus 25 equals 0. That looks pretty tough, right? Uh, I'm going to show you I, I can't, it can't be that bad. So let's, let's just see if we can do that. And I'm going to, yeah, I could use the AC rule, but I, I like playing around. I like experimenting. Let's try this. I don't know if it's going to work. So I'm going to say 9x. If it doesn't work, I get race, right? An x. And let's see. Let's see. Is that going to work? Let's see. I put 5 there. Now nah, it wouldn't work, would it? Let me get my eraser out. I'm going to try this instead. Whoops, I made my, my pen back. I'm going to try 25 
and one. I'm not saying that works either. I'm just going to experiment. And they put minus minus down. Let's see, you get 9x squared. That works beautifully. It always does in trial and error. Then you get min minus 9, minus 25, minus 34. Yeah, it works good. So I'm going to say I got an x here. I'll write this down for you. The easy one to write down is x equals 1. And, and I'll get the y later. And the other one is x equals, it's more difficult, 25 nice. And this was known as a point of intersection. There's two of them. I need to write the point down. So if x is 1, what would y be? I want to point I'm using this over here. And what do you get? If x is 1, you'd get 3 minus 5, which is minus 2. Which is 1 over here? Well, if x is 25 ninths, 3 times 25 ninths is 25 thirds. I'll write this over here for you. Minus 5, again, we're using this equation here. And 5 is 15 thirds, right? 25 minus 15 is 10 thirds. Again, these are the points of intersection between those two curves. Now, certainly, if I'm going to graph it, what I'm going to point out is graphing it. I would probably graph the easiest thing first, which is this thing right over here. And the way I'm going to do it, <coughs> I know it's a line. I'm going to put x and y down. I'm going to pick nice, easy points. For example, I chose x to be 1. I think it's easy, by the way. What would you get for y? Well, y would have to be what? Minus 2, right? All right, let's pick another one. I'm going to pick x to be 0 now. And what would the y be? The y would be minus 5. All right, I just want to look at my graph because, you know, I, I'm kind of running out of room. I just want to look at the line and see if I've got those points up here. So 0 minus 5. That's right there. And I also said uh, 1 minus 2. That's right over here. If I were going to graph that line in, again, I'm not saying I'm doing a great job. I get something like this over here. That's the line. All right. Let me do the other guy. And the other guy's going to be y squared. I'll write this down for you. Equals 4x. Well, I got some easy points over here as well. I'll put them down for you. I'm going to do a table, x and y. 0, 0 certainly works nicely. I'm going to pick another value. Now, what I know about x, looking at this, x has to be a positive number. I've already done the 0, so I can only pick positive numbers. Uh, I can pick 1. What would you get? y squared equals 4, so y would be plus or minus 2. I'm going to pick another number. I'd probably pick 4 for x. What would you get? Well, you get 16, because 4 times 4 is 16. What's y plus or minus 4? Now, what's the next number I pick? Probably 9. Someone says, why would you pick 9? 9 times 4 is 36, and y squared equals 36, plus or minus 6. I'm going to plot these out for you. 0, 0. 1 would give you plus or minus 2. Let's see, 4 would give you plus or minus 4. I think you know what I'm doing over here. And 9 would give you plus or minus 6. I think you're seeing the object, at least I hope you are. Yeah, I know the object's already down there for you. But you're learning by looking at objects, by connecting the dots. All right? Where are the points of intersection? Let's go through this. They're very clear here. There's no way you can read these from the graph, except possibly this one over here, which is 1 minus 2. If you're going to ballpark this one over here, I hope you know ballparking it, probably not going to be very successful ballparking that. You could say, oh, it looks like 3, 3. It's, it's not. But we'll look, we'll look at it. I'll point out why it looks like that. What do you get for the actual result? You get this over here. 25 ninths and 10 thirds. I'm going to write these as mixed numbers. 9 goes into 25 two times and 7 ninths. And... 3 goes into 10 three times with the remainder of 1, so 3 and 1 third. Now, remember what I said, it looks like about 3, 3, 3, and it, it really does, but it's not, right? If you really kind of trace this down over here, it would want to be a little bit below the 3, and if you just went over here, it's a little bit above the 3. 
This is an accurate graph, by the way. If you're doing a graph by hand, you're not going to see that. You're just not going to see it. Be very crude. All right. So let's look at this one over here. And I'm kind of looking at it. And, you know, certainly uh, if I'm doing that, I'd probably just look for the point of intersection first. And I'll get a rough graph in this one as well. But let's take a look. I probably just would do the point of intersection, right? And what do you get over here? I would say x equals 4 over y. And then I plug it in up here. You would get x squared, which is 16 over y squared plus y squared is equal to 17. Well, you know what I got to do? I got to do something over here. And I have to multiply both sides by y squared. And what do you get? 16. By the way, y can't be 0. I'm clearly looking at the system. There's no way it's 0, so I'm not worried about that. So 16 plus y4 equals 17 y squared. Well, it's a fourth degree polynomial. I'm expecting, you know, four solutions. I'm not saying I can find them. I'm expecting four. So let's write this down. y4 minus 17 y squared. And then what do you get? You get, uh, let's see, plus 16, right? Equals zero. Well, let me keep going. I'm going to try to factor it. Looks like 16 and 1, right? Yeah, it works beautifully. So y squared would equal 1, or the y squared would equal 16. And what do you get over there? You would get y equals plus or minus 1. And over here, you get y equals plus or minus 4. Well, i got four points of intersection now. Let me write them down for you. So I'm going to say 1 and minus 1. And I'm going to, whoops, I'm sorry. It's not, it, I, I made a mistake there. I, I got x on my brain here. I'm going to have to erase. It's not x equals 1. It's y equals 1. Sorry about that. I'll write this over here. Sorry about that. I'll get the x later. And let's do one first. Someone says, what are you, where are you going with this? I'm going to do this one. It's easier for me to do. So if, if y is 1, x would have to be 4. If y is minus 1, x would have to be minus 4. All right, now, if y is 4, x would have to be 1. And you see a lot of symmetry over here. I hope you really see that symmetry. It's really clear as day. And, you know, if, if y is minus 4, x would have to be minus 1. All right? So <coughs> I want to talk about the pictures here. And some pictures are easier than others. So I'm going to do this picture first. And this thing looks like the equation of a circle that we had before. All right? So if I wrote that in that standard form, that would be x minus 0 squared. That's x squared, right? Plus y minus 0 squared equals 17. So this is, this is a circle whose center is... Well, its center is going to be what? 0, 0. And the radius, it's a crazy-looking number, is actually root 17, which is roughly 4 point something, right? Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the picture now, and I'm going to identify the circle, and I'm going to identify the four points. So I'm going to look at the circle, I'm going to look for the circle, and I'm going to look for these four points on the circle. Let's see if we can do that. So I see the circle, and remember I said the circle centered at the origin. I'm going to trace this in for you. Clearly centered at the origin of the circle. And I said the radius was root 17, which is slightly bigger than 4. And I'm seeing those points. All right? I'm seeing the point here, slightly bigger than 4, the radius, right from the center. Now let me see if I get the points of intersection. And I'm looking at it, and this point over here, 1, 4. This point over here is 4, 1. We'll check it. Don't worry. This point over here is minus 1, 1 minus 4. And this point over here is going to be minus 4, comma, minus 1. All right? Did I say those points? Let's take a look. 
Yep, 4114. I got those two. And the other two would be uh, minus 4, minus 1. And minus 1, minus 4. All right? Now let's do the other graph. And again, we're trying to learn. I'm not going to say we're going to be great at graphing after this exercise, but you get better over time. And let's just do this, this graph over here. All right? I'm going to do x, y equals 4 now. I'm going to put this over here. And I'm going to write that down for you. x, y is equal to 4. And again, my, my instruction over here would be um, to do a table. Before I do a table, I'm going to rewrite this a little bit differently. I'm going to write as y equals 4 over x. I'll do my little table. Now, x can't be 0, right? So I know that much. But what's an easy number for x? I'm going to say 1. And if you did that, what would you get? you get 4 for y. I could also choose, like, 2. What would you get for y? 2. Again, this is the single worst way to graph it by picking points. But you could pick points. It's not a problem. All right? I wouldn't pick 3, by the way, but i pick 4. And what would you get over there? Well, 4, what would you get? You get 1. All right, so I, I'm just going to, you know, plot those points out real quick for you. 1, 4, right here. And then 2, 2, right here. And then 4, 1, right over here. Now, by the way, there's other easy points to do, but I want to talk about when the x gets larger. So when the x goes towards infinity, I'm looking at this, and I'm starting to realize it shrinks. Like if you chose 8, for example, you get a half. So I'm going to say it seems reasonable that this is going to go towards the 0 now. And connecting these things over here isn't so bad. The next thing I want to do is if I went in the other direction, towards the 0, <coughs> I want to point out what we're doing. We're, we're approaching x. This is 0. From the right of 0. And what happens? You start to divide by increasingly small numbers. It's going to blow up plus infinity. So I'm going to say it seems reasonable, too. It's going to shoot straight up. Let's pick some other values. I'll pick negative numbers. And I would probably pick minus 1 first for x. What do you get? Minus 4. Then you might pick minus 2. What do you get? Minus 2. Then I pick minus 4. What would you get? Minus 1. Let me plot those points for you. You know, minus 1, minus 4 is right here. Uh, let's see, minus 2, minus 2 is right about here. And then uh, minus 4, minus 1 is about here. You know, I'm definitely seeing something there, but I want to talk about it. As you go more negative here, minus infinity, again, I'm thinking, this quotient would become increasingly small but negative. So I'm going to say this seems reasonable to me. It's always going to be negative, but again, increasingly smaller. Going to connect it together. You learn by looking at pictures, by the way. And then I'm going to go towards 0 from the left side. That's your negative numbers. What do I get over there? Well, it's going to blow up, but it's always going to be negative. It's going towards minus infinity. Seems reasonable. All right? <coughs> All right, let's do this one over here. Yeah, more difficult. There's no doubt about it. But I think you probably know what I want to do. I want to do this. I want to find a solution to it first. All right, so let, let's see if we can do that. And I'm going to look at it. And I know it's tough, but I've got to be really careful about this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for, let's see, I think I want to solve for x. So you get 2x equals minus 5 minus 3y. I'll divide through by 2. And you're going to get minus 5 minus 3y over 2 is x. I'm going to take this, plug it in here, and see what we come up with. So let's see, x squared, I'll write that down for you. Plus 4y squared is equal to 4. Well, let's do our squaring. That would be 4. This would be 25. Let's see, plus 30y. 
I'm just squaring it, plus 9y squared, plus 4y squared, equals 4. I would probably multiply both sides by 4. And what do you get? 25 plus 30y plus 9y squared plus 16y squared equals 16. Boy, I've got to do something there, don't I? So I'm going to say 25y squared. I just took care of these two terms over here, plus 30y. And then I'll take 16 from both sides. And what would you get? Let's see if I took 16 from 25. You would get 9, right? Equals 0. I'm going to make an attempt to factor that. And I, I, I kind of like trial and error. And the reason for that, I like to play around with numbers. I'm going to say 5y. This doesn't look too bad. Uh, let's see. Oh, 3 and 3. Boy, that was easy. Gee, it's only one value, isn't it? And what's that value going to be? y would equal to minus 3 fifths. All right, so I got one value. All right, now I want to just talk about that one value and see what point we get. And I want to emphasize to you again, I'm going to look at this simple equation over here. I'm going to look at this over here. And I'm going to plug in. So what do you get? 2x plus 3, and y is minus 3 fifths, right? At least I believe it is equals minus 5. Again, I'm not graphing. I'm just trying to find that point of intersection at this point. I'm going to multiply both sides by 5. What do you get? 10x minus 9 equals minus 25. 10x, I'm going to add 9 to both sides. That's minus 16. <coughs> I'm going to solve for x, and you get x equals minus 16 tenths, and that's going to be minus 8 fifths. So I got one point of intersection, which is minus 8 fifths uh, for x and minus 3 fifths for the y. All right, graphing it. All right, graphing can be very difficult. What I want to claim, though, is that you want to graph something simple first. You want to graph this guy first. All right, I'm going to go to the picture. And I want to go through that. And what I'm going to graph, I'm going to graph 2x, I forgot what I was going to do, plus 3y equals minus 5. Now, by the way, I, I don't think graphing is a good idea in general, but it sure is nice if you have a machine to graph. All right, machine's going to be graphing this thing out really quick. And if I were looking at this and made a table up here, I'm looking for really easy numbers. And I would say minus 1, minus 1. All right, minus 1, minus 1. Let me see if I did that okay. All right, I gotta do another one. And the other one I'd probably pick, let's see. I'm gonna think of a nice, easy number to choose. Well, you know, I don't want to too big because my graph doesn't have a lot of numbers on it. I'm going to pick x to be, now I'm going to pick y to be 0. What would you get? Minus 5 over 2. That's minus 2 and a half, right? That's about right over here. So if I were to graph the line in, I'd graph the line and it looked like this. Whoops. Sorry about that. I graphed a line that looks like this over here. Now, again, a machine is graphing these. is doing much better than I could ever do. Let's graph the other guy, which I'll be honest with you, doesn't look too easy. It's x squared plus 4y squared. Equals 4. All right? Now, someone says, how are you going to graph that guy over there? Again, I'm looking for easy numbers. It's, it's probably the worst thing you can do, but it's probably the... Uh, the simplest thing to do if you don't understand 
how that looks. And the first thing I would pick is, I would probably pick y to be zero. And if you did that, you'd get x equals plus or minus two. The next thing I'd pick is probably x to be zero. And what would you get? y equals plus or minus one. So I'm gonna plot those four points, all right? So I'm gonna say, you know, the, uh, if y is zero, x is plus or minus two. And if y, I'm sorry, if x is zero, you get y is plus or minus one. The next thing I want to point out looking at it, I'm kind of looking at it and I'm realizing that, you know, if I just concentrate on the x over here, I could get a range for the x's, by the way. And the reason for that is that I'm adding a positive number onto it, or, or, or at least it could be a zero. So the x would have to be between plus or minus two. Now, if I concentrate on the, on the, on the y's instead, I'm going to say x is always a positive I should say non-negative number. So, so the y would have to be between plus or minus 1. And I'm going to look at that and say, I'm not going to say this is, you know, a perfect thing to do, but it looks sort of like this. I'm kind of keep the x's, you know, between 2 and minus 2, and the y's between 1 and minus 1. All right? Here's the deal, though. I really think that you probably should learn how to use technology to graph these things over here. Let me just go for the point of intersection that we found by the good old-fashioned technique of elimination or substitution. And I said that point was, I'll write this down for you, minus 8 fifths, comma, minus 3 fifths. All right? Now, looking at it, I hope you realize that minus 8 fifths is going to be uh, minus 1 and 3 fifths. That looks about right. And minus 3 fifths, you know, if you look at it, it roughly right, all right, roughly right, because it, again, it, 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 it's less than one, less than one down, all right, not bad. All right, so I'm going to start to concentrate more on the solving of these things and um, less on the graphing of it, all right? So far, we're looking at this one over here. <coughs> Looks tough, I admit it. One thing I'd recommend you do, and I do recommend this, learn how to use technology. Oops, sorry about that. I didn't mean to do that. Graph this. Graph this. I'm going to point out this will be easy to graph. It's a line. This is more difficult to graph, but it's actually hyperbola. Do not worry about that. I would say graph it. If you graph it, you're going to see a picture. The picture will look like this. One thing you notice looking at the picture right away, looking at the picture, there is no point of intersection. Just looking at it, no point of intersection. Now, when I say that, in a real plane, just looking at the picture. All right, what I want to do is I want to go through solving it, though. So solve it. Now, you're going to be confused when you solve it. Not really. So I'm going to write this over here. What do you get? X equals... 2y minus 2. I'm going to take this. I just solved this thing for x, by the way. I'm going to take this, plug it in here. What do you get? 9x squared. That's going to be 2y minus 2 squared minus y squared is equal to minus 9. Uh, this worked, but I'll put it down for you. This is going to be 4y squared. Let's see, that's going to be minus 4 minus 4, which is minus 8y, plus 4, minus y squared is equal to minus 9. Oh, boy, it's going to be a lot of work, isn't it? 36y squared, minus 72y, plus 36, minus y squared is equal to minus 9. And when you get over there, well, let's take a look at it. You get 35y squared. That comes from these two over here. Uh, let's see, minus 72y. And then it's going to be plus 45, right? Okay, the one thing I want to claim about this over here is that it, it, it real, looks really tough. I mean, this looks really tough. I'm not saying it can't be. I'm just saying it looks really tough. I'm just going to do the quadratic formula. And what's y going to be equal to? Let's write this down. Well, let's see, the opposite b, which would be 72 plus or minus 
the square root. It's going to be work. Now, if I square minus 72, what do you get? 72 squared. That's not so bad. And don't worry about it. I'm not, I'm not going to kill you with the work over here. Minus 4 times A. That's 35, right? Times C. Let me keep extending this over here. That's going to be 45, right? All right. What goes on the bottom? Twice the A, which is what? 70. Now, what I'm going to concentrate on, and I'm only going to concentrate on this one thing over here. I don't want to do a lot of work, but I want to concentrate on this. And I want to show you its negative number, which means Y can't be real. All right, let's put this down. So I'm going to try to concentrate on 72 squared minus 4 times 35. Now, intuitively, I say it's smaller than 0. That's, that's intuitive for me. I'm saying this is definitely a negative number. Now, the way I'm going to do this might seem strange to you. I'm just going to not do too much arithmetic. That's 72 times 72. And what do you get over here? I'm going to you know, add 4 times 35 times 45 to both sides. Now, what I immediately notice off the bat, you know, looking at it, and I want to point out what I'm looking at over here. And I'm going to write this down for you. 72 is what? That's going to be 8, right? Times 9. And this is 8 times 9. No, I don't want to do that. And this is going to be 4. 35. And 45 is what? That's going to be 9 times 5, right? Well, I'm going to start to divide away to make the arithmetic easier for me. So I'm going to say you can divide both sides by 9. And you could divide both sides by 4, and you get this. So I get this over here. I get 16 times 9. And what do you have here? 35 times 5. So I'm going to say it's going to be a little bit easier for me to do now. Now let's go through that with you. So 9 times 16, that's going to be 90 and 54, 144. Well, I hope you realize right now this is definitely true. 5 times 30 is 150, and 5 times 5 is 75. This is definitely true. What do I now know? I know that y is complex. What does that mean? There's no real solution to the problem. As we knew from the picture. We knew that from the picture. All right? Picture's right over here. All right. Now what do you have to do? Uh, tough part coming. Got to do the exercise. All right. Now again, this is my feeling. My feeling is, you know, you should be able to graph things roughly by hand, right? Rough by hand. What I mean by that, when you're doing a problem like number one, I'm going to say make a little table up, and you're going to learn by this x and y. You know, you, you got you say what could you pick for x? Maybe one. What would y be? Minus six. Maybe pick minus six for x. What do you get for y? One. And you you plot a bunch of points down. So I'm going to say you could do that, plot points. It's probably the worst thing you could do. Another thing you could do is maybe solve for y, and you get y equals minus 6 over x. Really equivalent statement. What do you know about this? Neither, neither x or y could be 0. But the bottom line is you got to graph this guy. That could be by my points or thinking. All right? Points or thinking. Here's the clue, though. I really think you should start using technology. In other words, being able to use a graph, uh, a graphic technology to graph it out quickly. All right? I'm a big fan of graphic technologies, and you notice I graphed this one over here. But you know what? You can plot these points down, you know, like 1 minus 6. That's one point I got over there. Minus 6, 1. You get the idea, right? You could plot point after point after point. All right? This one over here, again, I recommend, you know, plotting points. These are all conic sections, by the way. Conic section... Uh, let me just point out, that this is hyperbola, this one here, hyperbola. All right, you'll study that later in another course, probably in your, uh, your trig course. All right, this one over here is parabola. I want to point out how parabolas look sort of like this over here, right? Parabolas look sort of like this over here. This one's a circle. You'll see the pictures later. This one's a parabola. Again, parabolas, uh, you know, in this case, you're going to look sort of like this or this, right? I should put this one down, too. And get your pictures, pictures, pictures. 
This one over here is an ellipse. I'm going to say ellipses look sort of like this over here. This one's an ellipse. Ellipses are sort of like this over here. This is hyperbola. You know, again, when I say hyperbola, you, 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 you get the idea that, you know, something like this over here. Then they could be rotated, all right? So, ooh, you know what? It's degenerate. Whatever this one is here, this is figure 190. Let me see if I did that. Figure 7. Where's figure 7? I'm going to take a look. I'm sorry, figure 215. 7 is degenerate. Let me see where that was. The figure 217. I'm sorry, what was figure that? It was 215, right? Let me go back over here and look for 215. This is degenerate. All right. Oops, sorry about that. Didn't mean to do that. It's degenerate. That's easy to show, by the way. I'm sorry. Let's keep going. So, some of what's more generous is lost its characteristic. It's two lines. It doesn't look anything like a conic section. All right. It's a degenerate. But it is from a cone, by the way. You just don't see it right away. It takes time to see those things. Uh, eight's a circle. Now, my impression over here is I, I, what I'd like you to do is solve by substitution or elimination, whatever you want to do, or by comparison. The bottom line is I also think you should get a graph and, and verify that you know what you're seeing in the graph is what you've done in the work, all right? And I want to point out, we, we, do, we give you very accurate graphs. They are labeled. What I mean by that, it says you know, what system you're doing, what figure. If, if for any reason you get confused by my labeling, please bring it to my attention. Maybe I made a mistake. Sometimes I do make mistakes in the labeling, all right? Although LaTeX does it automatically for me, sometimes I use the wrong name for it, and that's why the numbers are coming up wrong. But again, we give you a lot of detail over here about the problems, and we want you to look at that. We really want you to look at our graphs that we give you. Right? These graphs are being generated by a machine, by the way. There's a lot of problems. It takes a long time to get through that. Yes, it took me time to get through it. It took me a lot of time to get through those problems. It isn't something I do quickly. Now, what's next up? The SAGE. We're talking about a computer algebra system. Um, it's uh, a CAS is short for computer algebra system. Go to this website over here. You can download the application if your computer can do it, or just use the interactive web-based application if you're connected to the internet, by the way. And you know you, you can do this code over here, and you're going to see this code actually output something. It's going to output a graph, all right? So I realize this is not the intent of this course to teach SAGE. The intent of this course is to go over Webster Wells' uh, advanced course in algebra. Again, if you think there's any errors in my work, we I, I would love to hear from you. And when I say we, it really benefits a lot of people when people point out errors, all right? My email address is Bannon, that's B as in boy, the at symbol, N N. O -N .us. Please reach out to me. I really do appreciate it when people reach out to me.